got a new guy, Brady Hoke, a Michigan man. He'll have to win, but he'll have to win right, because we Michigan men got our eye on him. That was Charlie LaDuff more than three years ago on the day that Brady Hoke was introduced as the new football coach at Michigan. That's one of the great things that this great game of football does is teach young men life skills. Tonight, that excitement has turned to anger. Fire Brandon! Now there's a call for Hoke and athletic director Dave Brandon to be fired, all because of the mishandling of a player's concussion. He can barely stand yeah, up now. Yeah, boy, they, they've just got to get him out of the ball game. Yeah. Is this criticism warranted? Or would it be different if Michigan had a better record on the field? There are a lot of names and descriptions that were used over time that are inappropriate today. Plus, should stations lose their broadcast license if they use the word Redskins, as in the NFL's Washington Redskins? Tonight, some people say yes, but others say the feds should keep out of it. Time to let it rip. Front and center tonight, Fox 2 Sports Director Dan Miller just back from a one-on-one -on -one interview with Dave Brandon. He's got the inside scoop. Next to him, a graduate of the University of Michigan who found success in business. He is the former chairman of the state's Republican Party and the former ambassador to Slovakia. Now a candidate for the U of M Board of Regents, Ron Weiser is here. Also with us is a man who has guided a generation of young men to success, both on and off the field, and he continues that tradition as an educational consultant. Coach William Tandy is back. And so is Charlie LaDuff, a former cheerleader for U of M, now author and chief correspondent for Fox's The Americans. And for the medical perspective on this concussion controversy, we've invited Dr. Neil Alpiner. He's the section head of the Pediatric Physical and Medicine Rehabilitation at Beaumont Children's Hospital. Gentlemen, thank you for being here. All right, Dan, you had a chance to talk with Dave Brandon, and this is what he said right off the top. And he was shocked, he said, at all of the criticism aimed at him. Painful, painful. You know, I didn't come here five years ago to be in a situation where anybody ever questioned uh, our respect for and the importance that we place on the health and welfare of our student athletes. So the incident that occurred Saturday to me is um, a, a moment for us to really uh, take pause and learn from. Are you happy with the job that's being done by Brady Hoke right now? I'm not happy to be two and three and either is Brady and either is his staff and either are our student athletes. So there's nothing happy about that and we're not playing as well as we should be playing and as we felt we would be playing at this point in the season. If these young people are hearing every day how they're no good and they're not playing up to the level and they're disappointing people and they're frustrating people and they're not coached by com competent coaches, if anybody thinks that's a formula for success, uh, it isn't. In your statement, you said he noticed Shane stumble, could be a possible sign of concussion, he made his way down the sideline. Then there's a gap where we don't really hear anything else about the neurologist until he was surprised Shane went back in the game. Did he get to Shane? Did he administer concussion protocol? What happened when he got there? That's part of the problem. I mean, the confusion that took place, both the fact that nobody on the field really saw the hit and, and all they saw was him stumble afterwards, and a lot of people interpret that as a continuation of the leg issue. I mean, it was just one of these circumstances where uh, the pieces weren't properly put together. So Dan, after talking to Brandon, do you now have a better understanding of what went wrong, not only on the field, but in the fiasco that followed? Well, I think what he's basically saying is that it was a miscommunication on the field between the medical staff, within the medical staff, and between the medical staff and the coaches. Because clearly the neurologist and the medical team didn't get to him and say, done, concussion protocol, inform the coach, his helmet's gone, he's finished for the day. The training staff never got the message from the medical staff that he's done and finished for the day. And it certainly never got to Brady Hoke that he's done and finished for the day. So you had all those things. You mentioned what happened after that. To me, that's where this thing went up and got worse exponentially. If this was the only thing that had happened, they could have said, you know what? We didn't do our job on the field in terms of protecting a player and in terms of our medical staff declaring him out and saying, yes, there's a possible concussion here. Here's how we're going to change what we did. But they made it so much worse. You move it all the way to Sunday night, he'll just before 9 o'clock, Brady Hoke puts out a statement in which he doesn't mention the word concussion, and he says he believes his medical steam team handled things properly during the game. We know that's not the case now. He goes on the podium Monday at noon, 
and says to his knowledge there is no concussion we find out later that he was diagnosed the day before this is his player this is a man that was entrusted into him by his parents for his safety how does he not know what was going on it just if only the game had happened they could have explained it away put some new things in place and i think this would have been a pretty quick story but when they let this thing drag out and they put out misinformation after misinformation, they brought much of this on themselves. Ron Weiser, I know that you're a big supporter of your alma mater, a big supporter of several charities, including the United Negro College Fund over the years. But I also know that you are a hard-nosed businessman who demands performance. From what you have seen, does Dave Brandon deserve to keep his job? Dave Brandon is a Michigan man. He played football for both Schembechler. He came into this job. Yeah, I think you know he was the CEO of Domino's. Gave that up because he cared about the school. There are issues that are obviously there. Dave has to have the opportunity to take care of those issues. The president of the university is ultimately responsible for making any kind of decision relative to Dave's future. But look, mistakes happen. How do, how do they get fixed? How are they handled? The communication issue, I would agree with you. but that wasn't necessarily his direct responsibility. Do, does it bother you when you see hundreds of students rallying, calling for his head in the diac? Does it course, bother you at all? Oh, I, th I think there's emotions are high right now, and there has to be an opportunity for things to cool off. Uh, there are other reasons than just this, that the students were angry, and, and I think everyone knows they were upset about the seating policy, and perhaps there were mistakes made there too, but that doesn't mean that this incident should cause anyone to lose their job unless they made mistakes that should cause them to have that happen and that has to be investigated and then ultimately the president of the university has to make the decision of where people, which people are culpable, if any. Coach William Tandy, you have been on the sidelines. You know what it's like during a game in the heat of the action. Brady Hoke said he didn't see that hit. Is that possible? You, you know, I, I, I agree that I have no rebuttal for what was said earlier. But during a game, there are times that when a quarterback throws that ball, you're looking at the flight of the ball. And he could very well have missed that hit. Brady Hoke has been on that sideline coaching football for years. What does he have to gain to put a child out there or a young man out there to continuously get hit? I've been on the sideline for 20 years. We love our kids. We love the young men that we're coaching. So there is no reason for me to believe that he did that knowing he was injured. Mistakes did occur. Someone should have gotten information to him and said, listen, the QB is not looking good. Get him out of the game. But I don't think he stood there and lied when he said, I didn't see that. Yeah, to be clear, I don't think anybody who thinks there was malice on the part of Brady Hoke or that he in some way was careless in, in putting this kid out there and, and didn't worry about his fist. That, that's not right. I mean, I don't believe he saw it, and I don't believe he got word that there was a problem. Was it an oversight? Yes. Was it intentional? No. Does it define who he is? I don't believe it does. This thing of the program's a joke. I mean, come on. Look, watch the clip again. You got players doing this. There's no coach watching? There's, the press box is huge. We got how many coaches up there? 16 assistants? I don't know. You, he comes off and I, there's a grown man talking to him. They don't know his eyes are foggy. Really, I'm not buying any of this. They knew he was hurt. They didn't do anything. And if they didn't know, put some headsets on and be aware. It tells me the state of the program. And the, and the kids are mad because they're losing. That's why. Well, Brady Oak had this response to all the criticism that he's been getting. There should be some criticism, you know, when we talk about the performance, and that's me and coaching. I understand that. But when your integrity and character is attacked, I don't, I think that is really unwarranted. That's why I got into coaching, to help kids. Well, helping kids is also their welfare, you know, and their health. I mean, we would never, ever, if we thought a guy had a concussion, keep him in the game, and never have. And let's be real, if the Wolverines were 5-0, and would this be an issue? Nope. Not at all. Not to this degree. No, no. Not at all. I mean, people would probably react to a young man who had a head injury and had to go back in the game just because it's a hot-button issue right now. But th this has just been ratcheted up exponentially by the fact that this team's playing lousy football and the program, as Charlie stated, and, is in bad shape right now. And let me say this. I have six young men up there play. And 
These kids are about to graduate. They're in school, young boys becoming men. There's some other things that's going on that's positive. I understand he's losing, and at the end of the day, it's business. But this man cares about his kids, and those kids care about that coach. Well, even Shane Morris tweeted, look, I just want to play football. I just want to play. And doctor, when I was a young man, I got hit by elbows, uh, shoulders, bats, balls. I was woozy, but I went back in the game. We didn't know any better back then. So what right. is the protocol? How do you know that a concussion is serious enough to remove somebody from the game? Yes, so it's a good question. Why now versus 10 years, 20 years ago? So I, I think there's a couple of things. We have research and we have data. We have a fair amount of professional and non-professional players who are coming out with symptom signs and documentation of a dementia or an encephalopathy from multiple hits. So we do have data from those times when we got banged around. The protocols do vary a little bit from team to team, culture, you know, state to state. But the reality is the first line of defense comes from the players themselves. And in this case, the players did exactly what was correct. He got injured, he leaned on someone, you got three players taking action. So your first line of defense on the field are the players. And whenever I give a talk or I mention to the players, to the kids is, listen, you're responsible for your teammates because that's your it's, you're in the army together you're in the war trenches and even though Shane's yeah. saying no no let me stay in yeah. he needs to come out right because he's not you can't judge him the same and then you know the protocol is gonna be is it the is there a medical team there is it a personal train is it a trainer is it a coach who's gonna look at it typically we divorce the coach from it because you there's too much going on for the coach to make that decision. So it's going to be the paraprofessionals or the other people on the field. But that is the culture of football. And when I played, I had to have broken something. We knew what concussions were and how bad they were. That's the culture of football. He, you saw him. He's a tough guy. He didn't want to come out. Well, speaking of the culture of football, a high school football player in Long Island, New York, died this week after a collision during the game. He's only 16 years old. Yeah. But he was one of three high school football players to die this week from concussions and hard hits on the field. Right, and he had a pretty a massive event right off the back. It sounds like he got injured. He w is a head compression type um, effect, and it was that's a little more rare because of the effect. But the problem is you don't know which child or athlete is going to be the highest risk to have the bleed in the head. So we do take every precaution right now to make certain that we don't put them at risk. We don't get them back on that field. In this case, I think we have to divorce the politics of the field, the record on the field, and look at the case. Because we're talking a lot about, you know, Brady Hulk, and we're talking about athletic directors, and we're talking. And I do think we should take one step back. How is Shane doing? How is, what was the ramifications of this event? And how do we learn from it, from the fact that we don't want it to happen And again? of that, we can all agree. The young men who play this game are the most important people in the game. Absolutely. Well, Bottom line. Yeah, and I and think their it, welfare. In particular at this time where we have become much more aware of the effect of, uh, of injuries to the head, injuries over time. And, and I don't think there, there's any question in this case that the medical procedures that Michigan had mm -hmm. in place failed. That's why they're changing. And so they will be corrected. Bottom yes. line. Yes. We all agree. That's yes. What doing. Correct. Absolutely. And does that mean that Hoke has to go or Brandon has to go for that correction to take place? I think you get a lot of people to tell you that Hoke has to go to get a correction in the win-loss okay. column. I, I think that's what people <laughs> are more looking at right, right. now, just yeah. to be blunt. Bottom right. line. Gentlemen, right. thank you for your comments right. and your insights. Mm -hmm. Still to come on Letter Rip, the Washington Redskins under fire for using the name Redskins. Now the feds could get involved. But should stations that use that name be threatened with losing their licenses? We let it rip. Stay with us.